Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Dwayne Haskins. Lots of people excited about him, and for good reason. I think he was a great pick at where they got him. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, hopefully, the bias doesn't overflow into the video, but I think that the Washington football team, club, whatever they're called, yes, the name was racist. I'm glad they changed it. I'm even more excited to watch what Dwayne Haskins does this year. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. Boom. If you dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. Then there's also a bunch of different ways to support the channel. You can get a membership to the YouTube channel. You can get over to the Patreon community if you like this type of video, even longer form videos like this, basically what it's like to be in an NFL quarterback room. And then if you're looking to master RPOs, you're wondering what's going on, you want the most in-depth information available anywhere and you dig this channel, uh, you're going to love the course. I think it's the best thing I've created content-wise, so get over there, check it out. The link is in the description to this video. I'm excited. Let's dive into Dwayne Haskins. This is going to be a good one. All right, here we go. First throw of the game. A little dragon lion. You like this concept? Go check out the entire video I have on it. They actually run this three times in this game. At least we're going to watch all three of them. The first one is what's called a tight window. Holy moly. Check this thing out again. Down here to the bottom of the screen. Two slants. What? Not sure about that read. Normally, I teach this concept. We run this concept at the high school level. Middle field closed, middle field open. It gets a little bit blurry when you get into the middle field closed world, in my opinion. Middle field closed, post defender. We got a what's normally referred to as a dragon in the West Coast world, slant, flat, and what's referred to as a lion. A little shorter slant, a little deeper slant. Usually, read this thing, open, closed, but versus closed, you can really do two things. You got a middle field player, you can really take your best matchup on the perimeter, or you can go based off rotation as far as which one of these guys is the DB type coming down here. So safety, nickel, you know, it's almost six, one half dozen to the other. So lots of good stuff here. Play it out here. Can't tell you exactly how he gets this ball in here. This is just tight window throwing. Really nice. I'm not sure I would throw that ball. I'm not sure I would advise that ball to be thrown like that with the flat defender playing outside that first slant. You you got to really come up, and that's really why you read it inside out down here to the bottom of the screen. You got to put it on that first slant right there. Once he gets inside that nickel right there, the ball goes to the inside guy. Otherwise, that nickel can fall off into the slant, and really he should make a play on this ball. This is just bad ball by that DB. I want to say 29. Either way. That's a tight window. That's a rip. Whoop. Oh, man. Whew. Tight windows in the league. Footwork-wise here, you know, to me, I, I like this play off just one step from gun. You can get away with it if you have a cannon with a little shuffle. Again, you can see just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. Almost like he never even looks at that inside slant. And maybe he doesn't. He ends up throwing there later versus zero. But either way, that's a tight window. Dragon Lion. Next one here. We'll be able to come out here. And this is probably my least favorite play in football, especially in the West Coast world. We get a little Scat Hank. If you're a fan of the channel, you probably know that already. I'll let it play once. The reason why I put it on here is just the arm angle that he comes out here and plays with. He bobbles the snap here. Check this little flip out to the flat. Boop. Beautiful. A little bit behind him. I don't care. Concept-wise here, this is always that kind of like uh, borderline middle finger. I think play callers give quarterbacks when they do not trust them. Hit or hook. Hook. Over the ball. Sit. Flat. And you can either run a flat from the backfield or a swing usually. And the read here is one. Whoever takes this sit away. So when he comes back and sits here, if this defender takes the sit away, then we're going to work this hook flat. If this defender, whoever from this side, takes this thing away, then we're going to work this hook flat. You better hope you get zone, or else this thing's a disaster. Right here, he makes a nice play. They get him here. A little sim creeper thing, whatever. They only got four guys rushing. Two of them are DBs. They're fortunate that it's a five-man out. 
pass pro. If this thing was six man pass pro, they'd have a great opportunity to throw it down the field. First, watch the little bobble snap, like, boop boop, and then just that flick. That flick right there, to me, that's that's special stuff. You don't see a whole lot of guys have that the wherewithal, the ability to change arm angles that smooth, just whoop, like throwing a little dart. Pass pro wise here, they drop out both tackles, both two techniques over the guard to rush two DB types. So, all right, they got us. Us meaning offense. We got five guys out. Nobody to block 23. He sees the hot really nicely, gets it out of his hand. Boop. Arm angle, good decision, hot. Bummer of a concept. So, again, being able to put different things together, tight windows, arm angles. Big touchdown right here. Lots to talk about here. Again, pay attention up top to the, to the split of that wide receiver. Anytime a wide receiver is in that type of split, usually a key to the defender. He's going in or out. Shocker, like any route usually, but you're not going to run a go route from there very often. Here's that post. A lot of people run this play action off five. We'll talk about the back here in a sec, but one, two, three, five. Put it on him. Rip it. Good opportunity to see it. Throw it. Big play. Lots of teams run this absolutely horrific tackle here by the defense. One more time, just the rocker element of what's going on in the back end. So we get this little jet motion across the field. Watch the DBs rocker this thing down. New middle field player. He's not probably not used to playing there. Miss tackle, house call. There he goes. Don't get hocked. Look at yourself at the Jumbotron. This is going to be a play action to our left. Offense is right. The back has 53, in my opinion. He sees 27 come, come on the right. He's going back there as a scan. You can see he kind of jacks his footwork here. Doesn't get the greatest ball fake. So to me, I'll let it play once and then go talk through the protection here. I love to see that from the back. I love to see the accuracy, the timing here from the quarterback, even better. Play fake, one, two, three, four, five. Rip, no hitch. All his cleats in the ground. Whoop. That thing is beautiful. Now let's talk about exactly what the back is doing because this really matters in the pass pro world. And the NFL playing quarterback, a lot to do with the pass pro. So right here you can see, watch his eyes. He's coming this way for the play fake. Haskins out here, ball's extended right here. He's expecting to come down here, and he's got 53 if he were to blitz. He would blunt him right there. But he also has what's normally referred to as scan. So he's got 53, and I mean he, the back, has 53. Or he usually has four strong or whatever side this thing is. So he gets confused, in my opinion, thinking that 27 is four. Just do the math here. So we got right here, we've got these two. For those two, we've got right here, boom, we've got these two for these two. So he's trying to take the hit off a free runner on the quarterback. I love to see that in running backs. It makes me feel like they got their head on a swivel, best, best seat in the house. Great job there. But you can see the play fakes, not quite as good as it should be, but it doesn't matter. 53 is coming in. He sees the ball extended. And we go back, take the hit off on the body, on the break. House call, terrible tackle. But really nice job by Haskins. Got to be able to, you know, probably shouldn't be a touchdown, but it should be a great play like that. Little Lambo leap. Come out the next one, and this is just a straight up dime. This is probably my favorite throw of the game. A little push motion here. We'll talk about what this means for the defense, but he's throwing a wheel, basically a wheel to the number two up top. One, two, three to the field. I mean, that thing is beautiful. To me, this is a variation of quarter, quarter, half on the back end, which is shallow cross. This is West Coast special shallow cross here. Now, you don't see people rip the uh, field wheel like this very often. <laughs> That's a big boy. That's a whole shot throw, basically, to the wide side. This type of throw gets me really excited about Dwayne Haskins. The vision, the ability to pull the trigger here. So let's talk about this concept. So just the core concept of this is shallow cross. So here's a shallow cross. In zone, he can sit down here, or he can keep running in man. Usually there's a sit over the ball. The outside wide receiver has a post, and then we're usually going to get a wheel or kind of switch release go out here. Now, this play has a little window dressing with what I'm used to calling some sort of tear or push motion here. So when he goes like this early, it makes the defense declare. So motion identification, motion knowledge here. You can see these two guys push here. So really what's happening is the... Four becomes three. And what I mean by that is if you're playing defense, 
this is the one, this is the two, this is the three, and then how you handle what's normally referred to as a fast three or fast two or fast something. Now, is he, he's technically the four here, but when he's over here, does he become the three? Does he become the two? What's going on here? What happens here is we've got a, an issue with the original flat defender. So quarters, post right here, when this two goes flat quickly, this quarter safety is usually gonna pass this thing off. It's really hard for this corner to come off of a post into a wheel. So what they normally tell the flat defender in quarters is you've got anything wheel, wheel alert in quarters. So right here to me, he should keep going like this. But because of this push, of this fast action of the back, he gets confused. He ends up staying in the flat. Now we've got two guys in the flat area and no one up the wheel area. So lots of moving parts. But this is what I want to see from Dwayne Haskins moving forward. I don't want to see Dragon Lion. I don't want to see Scat Hank. I want to see him ripping shots down the field. I mean, that thing is beautiful. One more time. Watch the adjustment to motion. See him push. Push, push, push. See him run to the flat here. He's trying to get outside. Never pays attention to the wheel. There it goes. Just a really nice play design with just a little smoke and mirrors with that push motion. Causes issues on the defense. You can see if for some reason that wheel wasn't there, the shallow would be there, which is normally the number one read. Boop. Thing of beauty. Great job. My favorite play of the game from Haskins. I will say that there is an element here. here watch this. We'll watch the element of the push motion. There goes the linebacker running out of there, declaring early. To me, he drifts to his left. Now here, there, there's a reason to drift to your left. He's going to do himself a favor by learning to stay within the center of the pocket a little bit more as I watch more and more film of, film of him. This right here is a beautiful touchdown pass to a corner, back shoulder, high back five. DB has his back turned. All he's covering is the width of his shoulders. Very simple read here. I'll let it play one more time. Speed out, corner. I mean, and this is open in the NFL, y'all. You, you, this is a great throw. It's not a magical throw, though, by any means, but it's a it's a high-quality NFL starter throw. The read here is they've got a fade back here. If they like it, probably alert it. Otherwise, it's one to the speed out, two to the corner. And what happens here is we've got, he says no to the speed out. This guy's running on a trail outside technique. He's got his back turned. You put that thing high back five. Back five yards of the touch of the end zone, high back five. This thing could be higher, but it's a great read, decision, timing. Watch it from the back end. It's even better. You can see him go through his reads, though. He says no to the quick out. Watch the footwork. No, yes, boom. No reset, no heel click. All his cleats in the ground. He's got a great back foot. Boom. Love his flick of a release. Everything's easy. Whew. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we're throwing that corner right here. Watch 15. He comes off. When he lets this thing go, I'm going to slow this thing down. Super. Look, at, he's got outside leverage on a corner. Look, when he's he, he decides to throw it right here. His hands are separated. That is open in the NFL. Put it right at that camera, the camera person kneeling. Boop. There it is. This is NFL. This is why the red zone is such a different area. Everything is tight. Can't step into it, doesn't matter. Enough rotational force, little flick. Th these type of throws get me really excited. Boom. Perfect. So good. But it's not all great, that's for sure. And so a couple of these here I think he's going to wish he had back. This to me is seven-man protection with a middle field read by the number two down here to the bottom of the screen. I'll let it play once, talk about what I think happened, but this is a borderline disaster. All bad. So, So what exactly happened here? One more time. He's falling back to me. First thing I notice in the in the actual pocket, that little back hitch right there, not what you want to see late down the middle of the field. Now, to me, this is probably, I, I kind of like the idea, the design here, middle field open. You're always going to try to attack this middle of the field. What I mean by this middle of the field, you're going to see this half field safety, probably a quarter safety. So you're going to have some variation usually to come in here and hit this thing with a post. I think the wide receiver, Potentially probably kind of screws him a little bit when he comes in and nods and takes it like a double move, which would be great, but pretty rare, unicornish in this situation. This is a two-minute right before half. So he needs to come in here, and he tries to let this thing go. I think it's covered. You see this guy's get depth like this, this tight of a safety, squeeze it in. You just want to come out here, and he'll learn this. 
come out here, throw this check down. Things wide open. So the reason that this thing is closed or not open, not closed, not open, is because these guys are getting depth. When they get depth like this, especially in two-minute situations, just check it down. It's too easy. But I think the wide receiver kind of screws him a little bit. There's no doubt about it in my mind with this little nod. He, when he goes in like that, you got you, you can't do that to a, to a quarterback and then take it above the safety. you got to cross the safety's face. So one more time, and then when he makes that decision to throw it, look at the check down. So right there, you got to keep going. Either way, not a good decision. Contested ball, but then watch that check down one more time. Let me see if I can bring it back. We can watch the check down. Look how wide open that check down is. Again, underneath defenders get their hands on the ball. That means the check down's wide open. Just keep evolving as a decision maker from the pocket. Watch it from the back end here. We're getting chips on the outside. The back and tight end. Take the heat off. Again, you can see his back foot kind of falling back. It's that little back hitch that I'm not a huge fan of. That makes it way harder to throw. No reason to do that. Just reset up, shuffle up, find the throwing lane, check it down. I mean, that's whew, fortunate. That's living right. It's that vegan diet right there. And again, just because it, not every throw is going to be perfect. I get that. But there are elements of the, just the decision-making just a little bit faster. Right here, this is a three-layer route to the left. To me, this is what I'm talking about where he starts drifting, getting himself in trouble. This is a throw that he probably, he knows he should make. Just throw it out there, leave this corner out here on the 100. One, two, three, four, five, throw it. 100's wide open. They got a really nice designed play here. Concept-wise, we're basically running three outs. So we got, I want to say, speed out here. I think the point guy takes it to the deep flag. And then we've got just a normal corner in the trail. And this thing's wide open. They catch it versus a great defense, just straight up cover two, which I'm not sure why they're playing that. I think it's like third and medium right here. So they're thinking they're going to go short. And they take a shot down the field. But again, he would love, he should hook this up. There it is. I mean, it's, it's wide open. Again, from the back end, we'll talk about him drifting. You know, and he drifts and he gets himself in trouble. Even with all that, he still almost completes it with just a flick of his wrist. Now, to me, he needs to dovetail and, and get to his right. So when he hitches over, he's over the center. And I know his new quarterback coach, because he's coached me up on it, is going to be a big believer in the dovetail. Keep him more in the center so he doesn't have to deal with this type of edge issue. All they're running here is a ET to our left and a TE to the right. You're going to get stunts like this all the time. This shouldn't, you shouldn't get edge pressure like this unless you're drifting over there. Again, you just got to work within the pocket. Don't get yourself in trouble. That's a big play missed down the field. Then, now coming out, second half. This is a play that I put on here just to kind of showcase. You know, there are some things that I really love about Haskins. This is a third and four, but his athletic ability in the open field is probably not one of them. I would say most NFL quarterbacks, maybe even Haskins himself, thinks that he should versus man, essentially man-free, third and four, scramble. You should be able to get this. You shouldn't be able to be tackled like this in the open field. That's too easy. Nice play by the safety, 23, but... I, I would guess that he thinks he should make this first down. I think he should make this first down. Most NFL quarterbacks nowadays can make this guy miss and get a first down. But it is a nice open field tackle. Not the nicest move inside, though. So by by no means is it all perfect, but there are some great throws in here. Now we're back to Dragon Lion. Here we go. Now, middle field closed. Normally, I'd say worth the Dragon, but versus middle field closed zone, definitely I like the Dragon. Middle field closed man Again, this is where it gets nuanced. I like the lion up top. Why? Because the guy who has the back is usually the back is usually to the dragon side, and the man defender will fall off as the rat or thief into that dragon side. So you get a little bit better window up top. One, boom, <laughs> just on his face, fastball. Again, nice job not tracking the wide receiver. Gets his eyes to the right spot and throws it with anticipation. Boom. See when he lets that thing go. Slow it way down. Right there. I mean, that wide receiver's not coming out of his break yet. Boom. There it is. 
boom, right on the face. Got to catch that one. Again, from the back end here, we can see 53. He's the guy who has the back and man coverage. When the back stays in, he falls off into the dragon lane. He's not watching the quarterback's eyes at all. That's why you can work the lion in man coverage. Middle field closed. Boom. Beautiful. On the body, on the break. Next one up here. Schemed up. Love it. Speed option. Third and one. Again, not the most graceful open field runner, but we're going to option this guy at the end of the line of scrimmage down here to the bottom of the screen. He takes himself to the back. We're out the gate. Score. Or look for a place to get down. Whew. Linebackers are running in the league. From the back end here, I'll draw it up quickly. This is a great job. Terrible job. By, I want to say whoever's playing defensive end here, taking himself out of the world. We're speed optioning. We're reading this cat right here. He gets up the field, take 26. We're able to then basically, I don't know about great angles, but we're able, we're going up. Really probably should be these two. I think he takes himself into almost the out of the play here. Coming across, reach, 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 and go. Really nice job. Good play call. Short yardage. Everybody's going to run speed option. This is a perfect look at what it looks like. The right guard does a great job getting that guy into the A gap. My goodness. There it is. Huge. Again, you'd love to see him. I'd love to see him kind of open it up here. Looks like he surprised himself a little. He's so open. Go. Again, not, not the open field runner. Some other guys are, but still. Nice job be able to do that. Third and one, young guy, get after it, get excited. Good stuff. Dragon line again, third and 12. And now they're going to hit you with a zero, an exotic. We'll talk about the blitz from the back end. I'm sure this thing has a name for it. I don't care what it is. It's triple A to me. Meaning three guys are going in the A gap. Dragon lion. Nice job seeing it. Right on that inside guy and can't catch it for him. Drop. Beautiful read, decision, you know, still be a, probably a, a catch and field goal. Scheme-wise here, you see 37 creeping. Technically, there aren't, enough, there aren't enough gaps for these guys, depending on how you block this thing. But right here, the back is coming up. He's going to have 27. Center's going to go to 53. And there's basically going to create another gap right here. That 37 is going to be able to hit this thing right up the gut. Now, you, when you come from depth, that's why you can get the ball off hot. But you can't panic. You got to know where your hots are. You got to know where your options are. He does a really nice job right here doing that. There it is. Boop. Right on him. Beautiful. Great job negotiating the hot for most of this game. Now, this is a really important set of downs here. Six minutes left. Tie game. Second and ten. Fourth quarter. We're going to throw an inside fade to the number two receiver down here to the bottom of the screen. You can make an argument that this is potentially pass interference, but for me, it's just an underthrown ball. Basically, you have all stick up top, quick out and stick versus zone, versus man, we're going to throw this inside fade, and he just leaves it short. Got that room out there. Again, to me, this is one of those throws where I felt like I'd love to see him take just a quick hitch or reset to get a little bit more juice on it. Not that he can't make this throw off his back foot, but when you don't have to, why do it? It's like shooting a a fadeaway when no one's guarding you. Sure, you could do it, but it's just as easy to take a quick hitch, get something more on it. Just slightly underthrown. That's the difference. We've already seen what the difference is open is in the red zone. That's what, you know, that's the same thing. That's open. It's just slightly underthrown. Tough. Third and 10. This to me is, is a combination scheme. Everything else. This is a corner from the number three. And two little indies or fin routes by the one and the two. Catch it. Get up the field. Oh, right there. That first move is nice. Second move, he needs to get up the field and get the first down. Right there. Get up the field. But again, that's all you can do as Dwayne Haskins. Now it's fourth and one. They kick a field goal. They lose the game. This is a nice job, though. Offensive line-wise, pass pro-wise. I put this on here. When you get these crazy exotic blitzes you get in the NFL. Sometimes you the easiest way to do it is to just full slide the offensive line. But people know that, and they know that you usually full slide to the back. So you bring your back across and full slide. Nice job to clean it up. Now, they don't bring anybody here, so it doesn't matter. But again, just having a menu of options, how you handle that pass pro. 
You can see they're trying to fake that same blitz they hit him with the last time. Double A gap with the 37 creeper. Triple A, no, they bail out of it this time. And they should have got the first. That's the thing. That's the thing that sucks right there. You got to get that. Straight ahead, get the first. But lots of fun for me watching Dwayne Haskins. I think he's got a really high ceiling. I'm fascinated to see what they do with the new staff in Washington. Lots of good stuff. If you're a Washington football team fan, you should be excited. I'm excited for you. Thanks for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.